Vice President Kamala Harris says she's going to implement the first federal law against corporate price gouging on food and groceries to lower the cost of living. My plan will include new penalties for opportunistic companies that exploit crises and break the rules. And we will support smaller food businesses that are trying to play by the rules and get ahead. As of the day this video drops, there will be 39 days until Election Day 2024. So we're going to take a closer look at one of the VP's top economic priorities. And I'm going to attempt to remain as nonpartisan as I can and give you the most objective interpretation of what her policy position is. And at the end, give you my take on what kind of impact it might have, if any. So let's get into it. If you've never heard of the term price gouging, I don't blame you. It's usually only talked about in certain instances. Price gouging is when a business takes advantage of an emergency to raise prices, typically after a natural disaster. If a hurricane wrecked your house today and I charge you 100 times the original price for lumber tomorrow, that would be price gouging. Back in 2005, Hurricane Katrina hit the Gulf Coast, resulting in widespread flooding and destroying homes around Louisiana. In the days after, gas stations jacked up the prices to over $6 per gallon. The national average at the time was just $2.50. And who can forget the COVID-19 pandemic when people paid $60 for one bottle of hand sanitizer. Generally, businesses do this because a sharp increase in demand but with limited supply during an emergency can create the opportunity to raise prices for the sake of maximizing their profits. But just because you can do it doesn't mean you should. Penalties for businesses that violate anti-price gouging laws vary by state, but are generally pretty steep and usually include thousands of dollars in fines, jail time, or both. In 2020, the New York AG fined three sellers for price gouging. The company sold hand sanitizers for $20 to $35 before the pandemic, but then turned around and charged $80 to $130, a 400% increase for the exact same products. On the campaign trail, the VP says she wants to target businesses that aren't playing by the rules by illegally hiking prices. She also noted that ensuring competition in the industry is essential to bring down grocery costs for Americans. Although there already isn't a federal ban on price gouging, there are federal restrictions on related but different practices, including price fixing laws that prevent companies that normally compete with each other to give customers the best deal from going, hey, let's all just hike up our prices so customers have no choice but to pay up. And VP Harris knows all about this. When she was still California's attorney general, she went after a group of big electronic manufacturers that allegedly colluded to cheat the public, i.e. they didn't play by the rules. When it comes to price gouging, the VP hasn't released the exact rules for her policy, but she has said that the ban will build on the anti-price gouging laws already enacted by 37 states and DC. For example, California, where I am, limits the amount that a company can increase prices during an emergency. Specifically, the state mandates that companies can't increase prices by more than 10% after the government declares a state of emergency. And this protection is good for 30 days from the day the emergency is declared. Economists are split on whether the VEEP's ban is price controls or consumer protection. But let's take a step back here. What are price controls and what are consumer protections? What's the difference and how do they work? Well, price controls are government-imposed limits that set prices for goods and services. There are two main types, price ceilings and price floors. Price ceilings set the maximum price a seller can charge our price floors set the minimum price the buyers have to pay. The most well-known examples are rent control, which sets the highest price a landlord can charge, and minimum wage, which sets the lowest amount a worker can get paid. Consumer protections, on the other hand, are regulations designed to safeguard consumers from unfair, deceptive, or harmful business practices. For example, truth and advertising laws prevent false claims in marketing, and product safety standards make sure that products sold to consumers meet certain safety criteria. The difference between price controls and consumer protections lie in their objectives and how they regulate markets. Price control focuses on managing the cost of goods and services, while consumer protection focuses on fair treatment for consumers in their transactions. Price control directly affects market pricing, while consumer protection affects how businesses interact with customers, covering a broader range than just pricing. Either way you look at it, we're left with a question. Will Harris's plan actually work for the American people? Well, if history is any indicator, not really. Both Republican and Democratic administrations have attempted to manipulate prices to benefit consumers. Unfortunately, they are widely blamed for creating shortages, and even worse, long lines for gas. In the 60s, President Lyndon Johnson tried to persuade companies to forego price increases and labor unions to limit wage demands. When inflation spiked in the 70s, President Nixon froze wages and prices on food and gas. It actually worked for a while, only for prices to soar once mandates were eventually lifted. Nixon's successor, Gerald Ford, called for a softer approach, asking businesses to voluntarily maintain or reduce prices and people to spend less and conserve energy. So if inflation amounts to rising prices, locking in prices is an easy fix, right? 
Not quite. Treating inflation this way is just a band-aid and that it does nothing to cure the illness. Econ 101 says prices are a measure of what customers and sellers agree a product is worth. Businesses move resources from what consumers want less of to those they value more. Unusually high prices mean there isn't enough of something to go around and capping its price all but guarantee shortages. Even though these policies are about fairness in theory, in practice, they tend to create more problems than they solve. Capping gas prices might help consumers temporarily, but if gas stations can't make enough money to cover their costs for their supply, they'll eventually stop selling gas or sell less of it, creating the shortages. That's not to say these policies don't work at all. They can in specific localized situations, like at the state level, where they keep essentials affordable in an emergency. But when we're talking about federal policy, it's much harder to find a one-size-fits-all solution. Runaway inflation has been hurting people for the past few years now, and like Nixon in the 70s, Harris wants to do something about it. But truly the biggest driver of inflation today has been interest rates, which is set by the Federal Reserve and the president has no control over. That being said, if banning price gouging is her way of fighting inflation, it's just one part of our full economic agenda. So can the potential Harris administration effectively curb inflation with the least unintended consequences and live up the economy? I'll let you decide that part. If you got some value out of this video, make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. I make concepts about personal and small business finance and financial news, and my goal is to take concepts that might sound complicated and make them relatable and easy to understand. So thanks for your time. Make sure you register to vote, and I'll see you in the next one.